Welcome to Puyvidal, a 13th century chateau nestled in the heart of the Charente. Join my mother, my father, my sister, my fiance, and I, an American family, as we move from New York City to California to the southwest of France. This is Dreaming of a Chateau. And we're very excited to see all of you. And we're we're going to catch you up on all of the wonderful things we've been doing in the past few months when while we've been off camera. Um, hibernation. We'll show you hibernation we've mode. been in complete hibernation mode. It's pretty necessary when you're running a chateau and all season long you're you're really just go, 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 and filming and just executing a lot of things. And we found this winter we needed like a deep reset time to reassess and do a lot of the the kind of foundational administrative, big, big renovation choice kind of work. And yeah. since moving here, we found that each year really does have like a season arc to it. Mm -hmm. And it starts right, right about now. Right about now, yeah. Um, yeah. I was and then this year particularly, we've had an incredibly gray and dreary winter. And it's the first one we've all spent here as a family. And yeah. the whole family has had seasonal affect disorder, or depression, or we've all been incredibly just groggy and tired and, and just hibernating. Yeah. You know, we had someone ask us today, do you know, what do we miss from home? And, yes. and I, I said today, I was like, I miss New York City in the winter time because you know even though it gets dark at four or five o'clock back back at home, you have a bar, you have a yes. restaurant, you, you can have, just be inside. You have bowling alleys, you have you just go anywhere and things are open and here it's absolutely dead. So it's it's yeah. a major adjustment. Yeah. Um, last year's winter was not like this. It was no. not as gray and. depressing. It and still this feels year, very slow, but at least there's sun starting and to there's kick a, up. There's still some yeah. life. This year was just incredibly gray. So we basically just took a hiatus from our social media and filming. And it feels nice to just be off camera. It can be quite taxing to film yourself and watch yourself and Especially edit the, yourself yeah, all the, the time. During the downtimes, too. Mm -hmm. um, so, But we are going to take you back to all, any of the footage that we did manage to record of projects and, and walk you through all of the different things that we've been having completed around the chateau because it's quite a lot and we're very excited about it. Here we go. So, it is February and here we are in the office. It's dark and rainy. It is it's dark and... Day of the winter. Yeah, I'll show you outside. It seems to never improve. We're getting seriously depressed. So it's been like this. I think ever since uh, October. Rainy, oh. gloomy, overcast. We get perhaps one day of a little bit of sunshine every three to four weeks. Yeah. And then it's that's it. Insane. So at the chateau, the pets keep us happy. Hi, Wendell. This is Wendell. Wendell is now six months old. Here's Miss Leach. Hello, Miss Hello. Leach. I'm working on packing. Julia, yeah. In the rain. This month has really been mostly about this last well since since New Year's we've been working on taxes. We're switching accountants. We are finishing up our workshop lineup for this year, mm -hmm. and we are we're 
almost celebrating that it's been a year since your mom, your dad, and Penelope arrived. Yeah. Which is wonderful. Anyway, here we are. Here's our workshop calendar board that we started filling out during the um, early parts of this year. Julia and I do a lot of sticky boarding and kind of spend most of our days in here lately, hiding from the rain. Yeah. As you may all remember, we refinished this floor and we also completely redid the bird suite up here in the pavilion corner area of the chateau. And we frantically got it done for the September workshop. But then my mom moved back in and she just could not get used to the color that we chose. I remember explaining some of our upsetness with the pea green color from Little Green. And unfortunately, it just has not improved. So my mom's been on a new color testing journey. And I'm going to check out how she's doing. Ooh. Hello. One second. Oh my god. I was just explaining how you've just been hating the color. And so this is the new color we found. It's called Green Blue on the Faro and Ball palette. Oh, it's so pretty, Mama. It's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And <clears throat> it, it was so weird that the other one was blue-green. It really was more blue-green than this one. Yeah, it was this more greeny. Long, long gray. Right. But it just looked terrible with the wallpaper, even yeah. though it came with the wallpaper as a good match. But yeah, it was I a saw, suggested palette. Yeah, yeah. So this is much better, but it's how many... How many tests did I oh, do? We've probably done, we right before the workshop, we probably looked at six or seven different greens and blues. And then even now you looked at a yellow, like three different yellows, a terracotta color, and then and a green at least well. two or three greens. Mm -hmm. It's been very difficult. It was a nightmare. <sighs> I was ready to take the paper off and just start. You, but no. Yeah, this is the little green um, paradise paper from the archive trails. It does have a little bit of a sheen, which we've decided we're gonna stay away from in the future because it it does give it a little bit of a modern look that we're not a fan of. But somehow the pea green color it was suggested to go with matched really well with this background color, but it didn't complement it well. So now this is the new color, and it's kind of like a softer, grayer, it's just more like subdued and diffused, and it's it's looking so pretty. Even with the new, you know, the temporary floating parquet floor color, it looks really nice. I think one of the other problems in here is that we're having to paint three huge walls and there's no ceiling molding or anything up here. It's just a little bit of trim around the doors and the baseboards. So in general, that kind of look makes it look modern. Yeah. It was so, the baseboard yeah. And we put the, what are they called? The, the ceiling rows. Oof. Yeah, Whoa. we need to decorate the ceiling a bit more because I think it looks modern to just have like plastered walls like this and before there was wallpaper so it looked really nice but if you get the right color it can help a lot and i think mama has finally found it right look at this beautiful january day we're finally oh getting gosh. a little bit of just temperate weather it's beautiful so yeah. Mama loves this room because of this beautiful view, right? Hello, come on in. Wow. Do you have a yeah. What's that face? You don't like it? Oh, uh, no. No? You don't see a difference? No, it's not that. No, no, I see a difference. Okay. 
I'm just seeing how difficult this wallpaper is. You don't think it goes with it? No, it, no, I think it does. I think it goes better than the other color. I think, uh, you know, once I get everything done, you'll be able to tell. Better. Yeah. When I take the tape off and everything, yeah. it's going to be The other it's thing really is pretty. I found it has such I a big expanse. I am fuzzy, and I didn't know I was fuzzy. It's taken me all these years <laughs> to figure it out. Do you want to see the truth? No, I'll you don't want because oh, I just love this room. Because, <laughs> why, why, you never slept here. Mama, I love here. this color with the wallpaper now. It's really pretty. The, the one? Yeah. yeah. You know what I really was... Yeah, what a great unexpected visit from you guys. Let's see. What did they do so far? Big work us? started today. Yeah, big work started today. Not that big, but big for us. Big enough. Big so far. This is called the Prince Room. We never show this Penelope's room. Future Room. Aha! Sneaky! Yeah, they've been playing up another What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, let's you think we just storage for us right now. So it's... Oh, you clean up a lot. Yeah. Was this mom was cleaning up this morning? No, it, it was like... me hours last night cleaning up so as your bow wouldn't see the catastrophe. Wow. <gasps> Oh my oh, god. No, oh, so One cool. day of work? Yeah. Oh, I see his little bucket system. It only took him like an, two hours to take this down. Isn't it was so amazing. Is there a thing being here? The yeah. That's yeah. wonderful. So it looks way better. <gasps> we can finally see that. That's um, what it looks like. See. It's amazing. It's all rotten. It's all rotten, yeah. So wasn't that? Wow. I guess that wasn't a cabinet when douche. The, when I kind of thought it was. It's a built-in no, shower. No, they're all built in. Mine is then. Look at that ancient pipe. Is it mine? Mine, yeah. I think yours might be. Yeah. And then look at this. It's so cute. He covered up the hole with just a little piece of tile. Oh my God, the hole's gotten bigger. Mm, I think it's always that it's big. Terrifying. It's always that big. Uh, sneaky out. out. So how cool! Oh my god, this looks so yeah. nice. Oh, I, 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 you guys! Get over here. He said, like, "Get over here." <laughs> An opening between brick. Ah, I'm gonna go in the walls. You? No. Yeah. No, man. He's been waiting for his chance to get inside the walls. Geez. Hi, baby. Hi. How are you? Hey. The thing is that they wow. have to wait to they have to wait to cut the water. So they ask when are the guests leaving. Okay. Oh, they have to cut Tomorrow. it for the entire shot. Tomorrow. We've been very excited for months to catch everyone up on the renovation plans here at Chateau de Puy Vidal. Last we spoke about them was probably a year ago when we had really, we were knee deep into the process of developing a global plan. And that took us a long time because zoning each wing and each floor of the chateau is, it can go in so many different directions and it's so much based on the needs of our particular project and our family. And last time we updated you, we were really still working through the zoning. What happened after that was we had decided on a global plan and then we chopped it into phases so that we could both financially and schedule wise actually break things up in the winters between our workshop seasons. Mm -hmm. And we chose a phase to start with that we then quickly decided was the wrong phase because it involved the kitchen and we were still not quite sure about the kitchen logistics. So we switched phases to the bedrooms of the central wing. And then in a, in a moment of ambition, we added the entire east wing to that phase. So we decided to renovate the central wing, the most historic part of the chateau. We decided to do all the bedrooms and the east wing for all of those. What, we'll show you what our vision is for all of those spaces. And around the time that we were starting to plan for when the renovations were going to happen and choose artisans and, you know, really get the project going, our architects being wise and understanding how things work in France said, oh, you're protected on the facades of your chateau. So it would be prudent to contact Batiment de France, which is the government entity that manages and approves all protected buildings 
and just kind of let them know that we're starting renovations and sort of get them in the loop because anything that comes up in the project later on will be better if they've you know visited the location and are aware and then during that visit we were informed that they had reread the the dossier that actually protected the building and they found that when it said at the very end that our chateau in the central area was protected in its entirety we had always assumed and had been told by everyone that that was the entirety of the facades but no the entirety of the the entirety of, of the central wing is protected the inside as well the interior is protected mm -hmm. and m even more than that all four towers of the chateau are protected and we were absolutely Floor. astonished yeah. to hear this yeah. a huge reason we had purchased this chateau is because it was not protected on the inside we had been assured that it was not protected on the inside and we could do whatever renovations we want on the inside. But now after having learned this, what that means is you basically partner with Batiment de France the entire length of your renovation journey and you show them every single detail you're planning on changing from the layout to every last material or woodwork furniture. or furniture furniture everything lighting yeah. everything yeah i think i think this is probably the better route for us i think so too i think we're embracing it we've had a time to digest this massive piece of information mm -hmm. and since then we have um they basically told us that to get the first part of the renovations approved that we needed to create an entire historic study, study. Mm -hmm. of the building mm -hmm. and the most important part of that was to get in very very clear terms every detail of the 1970s renovation because that would really help decide how much is original and how much is completely added on by the former owners. Mm -hmm. So they wanted that that particular marker very, very well documented and any kind of archival his, history that can be found. Lucky for us, the old owners are- and They're uh, very, very helpful. And they're very helpful. They've been very gracious to come back. They came back this winter to really walk us through the enormity of the work that was done at Puyvidal in the 70s. And we discovered some incredible things. We'd always known that that renovation was very serious, um, but I don't think we've fully comprehended yeah. how much they changed and how much was actually in, in completely uninhabitable condition when yeah. they purchased. When we purchased Puy Vidal, we were all under the impression that a lot of the details and flooring and the finishings of the interiors were a lot more original to the chateau than we've discovered they actually are. Some of it is very old, but just sourced from other chateaus and churches in the surrounding area. And other things are made by carpenters and artisans in the 70s. And when we found this out, we had to adjust our idea of the chateau in general. And I think at the end of the day, it's actually given us a lot more freedom. And I think instead of being so tied to the idea of everything being original and old and that being its only value, it's actually shifted my point of view to really valuing all of the people who have come before us here. People like the former owners and like so many Chateau owners we meet all over France. I'm so inspired by people who have this poetic soul inside of them that helps them bring beautiful things together, things of quality, things of timeless value. People keep pouring this sensibility into these buildings and that is what keeps them alive. And that is what makes them feel relevant and healing in the modern day. I've come away from this process with a deep respect for every owner who has come before us, as well as a lot more excitement and boldness about the choices we get to make here.
really, in summary, all of the, the photographic proof and um, the entire account from the former owner helped our architects create an entire historical dossier for Batimont de France. Mm -hmm. And many, many of the things he shared with us actually perfectly justified our renovations to basically restore before their, their renovation. Um, because so much of their renovation was to customize the chateau to create apartments and elevator access for their grandparents, for instance. So they were really um, making very specific changes for their specific family. And now we need to kind of go back in time to create a more unified flow in the chateau that can accommodate, you know, 10 to 15 guests and have everyone flow well. And it's it's a bit more of a centralized home um, in our renovation. And I think, yeah, we're just kind of undoing the the family unit logistics that they had they had added. Mm -hmm. So I think to me, outside of our business project, it's still a lovely thing to do to the chateau to kind of restore this center of gravity in the chateau that, you know, the the hallways, the staircases, all the flow kind of leads into centralized places. Ideally, we'll have a larger kitchen and I think we're restoring a, a, a harmony to the building irrespective of what our business project really is. Mm -hmm. For sure. So today at last, after eight months of discussing and planning and clearing and cleaning, we're finally removing the wall of the caretaker cottage to open up the space for our new art studio. So let's go check it out. Let's go. Okay, the wall is coming down right here. <laughs> oh my god, did it! Did you realize that these rocks are so large? Oh my god, this is a workout in here. Isn't it beautiful? Wow, it's so cool seeing the two doors like side by side. Oh, that's so cool. It feels so spacious. Oh, that's the right size room. Yeah. Right? Yeah, for sure. paw prints in the cement. It's already dry too. <laughs> Thank you, Troubadour. <laughs> Our big project of the season, which we kind of dove in head first. We advanced it by a year. We thought we were going to do this next year, but because our large renovations were taking so long, we got all we, we all got, got really wild, excited. Wild up. We were like, we need to do something this year. Let's do something. We wanted to see some major progress here instead of a lot of little things. We wanted one big, big thing. Project, yeah. Um, so we decided to renovate the entire pool. The Puibidal pool <laughs> is getting a major upgrade as we speak right now. They're doing demo. Well, not right now because it's five o'clock and yes. French people have stopped working at this time. But yes, um, we broke ground on the pool this week. And this has been a very long process that we started in October, I believe. Mm -hmm. We started in October of last year. And it, you know, it started as a very innocent, like, let's get pool quotes. That was me. 
Let's get some pull quotes. We just want information. We just wanted information. And of course, when it's information and it's a very excited salesman, salesman or woman who come in, um, the five of us just got really excited at the idea of having a pool this spring slash summer. And so we went with a couple of companies, got a couple of quotes. And after many, many meetings, we decided on a wonderful company called Diffuseur here in France. And we're they're based in Bordeaux. They're based in Bordeaux, um, and they're able to come out here to um, our area in Chiron to really make a free-form pool, which is what we're looking for. We wanted to really break up this old 1970s pool, which is kind of square and quite large for the area, and make something more like a a very basin-like. I can't call it bassin, in, bassin. Fran- in French. In French. <laughs> I call it bassin <laughs> in French, which is sort of like a basin, a basin, but like a long rectangular shape. And then we added Roman arches at the ends. And we're really trying to echo the architecture of the, the central wing with the towers on the ends, mm-hmm. kind of really... In French, you say "hate," like like um, Rem, re, remind echo. you and echo it, mm-hmm. um, because you're you stand in the pool and you see the tower directly in front of you. So mm-hmm. we thought that'd be really beautiful. So we it took you know when, as it most things do at the chateau, it's five of us. So all five of us have opinions. So it takes quite a long time between the five of us to come together and really agree on a certain plan. Yeah. So we have paralysis by analysis. Yeah, paralysis <laughs> by numbers. Um, so and yeah, we're, we're super excited. We're really, really hoping we can get it done by the start of our season. You don't we think promised it's our yoga retreat in June that they would have a pool. But as all things in France, it's taking forever to break that yes. down. So we're finally, we're finally there. We're breaking ground now. And it's actually, it ended up being miraculously perfect weather because it's been raining every day for the past four or five months and just this week as they broke ground we have sunshine so yes we're gonna we're gonna say that's a good omen for us that we're gonna finish on time but this is very fun i think we're all a little bit in shock that it's happening wow yeah it's fun this is what preparation is all about you prepare you prepare you prepare meetings 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 and then all of a sudden it's boom, break ground. Very cool. is that Batiment, after ah, meeting yes. with us and kind of reviewing our overall project, we submitted this kind of last minute rushed um, request to redo our pool because we have to request permission to do anything on the property since it's next to the part that's protected. <laughs> so we just, we have to ask them for Ev- absolutely everything, everything yeah. we have learned. And um, so we submitted this dossier with the help of our architects and the pool company, and we put this this whole thing together. Um, and then two months later, we got approval from them that everything we had planned was beautiful and in accordance, in accordance. with the aesthetics. Yeah. And this was just a huge win for us that on our own, we had picked natural stone from a local quarry. We had picked a beautiful deep blue, or it's a deep gray liner that will create a dark blue water color. Um, we had picked a lot of vegetation, so we're increasing the amount of landscaping around the pool. Yeah. We had picked the long basin-like shape, um, and we had hidden all of the filtration and stuff under our outbuilding that already exists. So these are all the points that they said were required and we had actually chosen all of those things ourselves so we, we were very very lucky and i think um, yeah, we were, we're very we were happy very happy on aesthetic on track maybe a month month of a delay yeah but overall we're happy and we're hoping we're crossing our fingers that we can get this project done but um yeah it's the big big work of 2024 
because yeah, our renovations, early, yeah. if we if we start them, we'll start in November at yeah. the end of our season. We're kind of racing toward that November renovation deadline, um, which means we have to really start choosing things like fixtures and molding and layouts and furniture even now so that we can order everything for it to be for, here in yeah. the winter. Yeah. And as we approach our retreat season, we have less and less mental space for those kinds of choices. Um, but I'm really excited because Carolina had, um, she booked a color consultation from Pharaoh and Ball, which is our current favorite brand of paint and color science in general. Um, so we have a wonderful color consultant coming down from Paris next week. Yeah. And I'm going to just absolutely geek out with her to just have an expert to share all my ideas with because I she has a lot of love ideas. color <laughs> <laughs> and I paint and test paint and my mom loves color and she's considered a colorist as a as an oil painter. And so I'm so excited to have like a professional come and kind of yeah. help us and guide us and hopefully give us confidence in our own choices. Yeah, we'll make a video on that. We're going to have yeah. a color colors with Queeby doll video coming up out next yes we hope yes um, everything about this winter has been comfort for our guests and we very much hope they will all turn out well i they think will. they will i think they will yeah we're getting close yeah two months until the start of our season and i think we're almost there so wish us luck yes Beautiful. Hello. Hello. I'm explaining, you know, all the beautiful things that Friends. were left behind by the former owners and our potential plan of relocating them to the art studio, which I, I'm feeling good about. I think it's going to look, you know, like treasures. Like what that place <laughs> should look like, right? Yeah. Kind of like they always lived there, like this beautiful... Mm -hmm kind of rustic attic kind of experience, but like, Absolutely. you know, cleaned up and- Cleaned up and actually sort of accessible. we know we're going to use in the future. Right. Yeah. But, you know, I think that stuff, like this, these would be beautiful still life kind of things. It's just yeah. beautiful plates. Old dusty glasses, I think would be beautiful to photograph, like all this stuff. And I actually think that keeping it up here makes it a lot harder during the art retreats to actually well, it's not really come safe pull it to down. Send people up here, yeah. Oh, hey, there's glass back here. Yeah, those are cool. Those are pretty. We should Whoa. definitely keep that. Really cool. I was just saying it should be part of our haunting the chateau retreat somehow. Oh, okay. It's so like spooky. But I can go. Look at this, I just saw this. I bet Penelope and Mama found this. A poem about Pivi Doll. Yes, written in the 80s, probably by the Rodinos. Let's see. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, that's beautiful. In the deep forest where mysteries lurk of chasms and waters lost under the great woods, an ancient manor raises its lofty towers, which dreams of the battles of the lords of yesteryear. How many broken assaults against these old stones, merciless duels, fierce tournaments. How many screams, how many tears, when from distant wars only the black palfreys returned one evening. Laughing in the clear morning, in the green setting, where the birds sing, where the breeze whispers, the feudal castle emerges from its past. Kind hosts whom we love and admire welcome you and do with charm and smile the gracious honors of their dear Puivita. Oh, 